Thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, you're with Sales Intel and we're presenting on how to double your event ROI with a data partner. My name is Jason Hubbard. I'm Vice President of Growth with Sales Intel. Uh, so, you know, in over 10 years of marketing and SaaS, uh, I've done a lot of events. Uh, that's been a huge part of the budget with a lot of the organizations that I've worked with. And so I've learned the hard way, a lot of things that work and a lot of things that don't. Um, but, you know, no matter who you're working with, no matter what events that you're sponsoring or part of, uh, the single biggest thing is, you know, do you get an ROI out of that event and how do you maximize that ROI? Uh, so the traditional kind of table stakes things that everybody knows about and you, you have to do um, in order to have a successful event, uh, obviously you have to man the booth. So you want to make sure your people are well trained, that they look professional, that they're dressed appropriately, uh, that they know their talking points, they know how to engage. Um, you need to have collateral um, printed that looks nice, that's ready to hand out. Uh, some keys around collateral, you know, keep it simple, uh, you know, do something to make it stand out. Uh, you know, don't overload it with every piece of information and detail that you have because, you know, people are just going to glance at it. People don't read, especially at conferences where they're getting inundated with all of this stuff. Um, so keep your collateral simple, uh, to the point, figure out your handful of things that you want to focus on, uh, and, and focus on those. <clears throat> uh, Produce a product video. So, you know, like I said, people don't like to read, uh, especially when they have all kinds of collateral uh, that they're being handed uh, and that need to go through. Uh, so video can be a great way, especially to capture the attention of people that are walking the floor uh, that are trying to figure out what you do, who you are, uh, and what you have to offer and trying to evaluate, are you somebody that's worthwhile for them to come up to and talk to? Um, so videos need to be uh, you know, easily conveyable, easy to understand without any sound. Um, so if anything needs explanation, make sure that it has uh, some sort of uh, subtitles or text on it. Um, because even if you have the ability to run sound, uh, you've got a really, really noisy floor. So the chances that they're going to be able to hear what you have on the video are pretty slim. Uh, and even if they can hear it, that's then going to be competing with the conversation that your reps are having at the booth. Um, so have a good video that does a good job of explaining it, does it with, uh, without the need for any sort of audio. Um, and then, you know, a basic that a lot of people see, have something to give away. Um, uh, you know, people go back and forth on whether it's worth it to invest in uh, swag or kind of tchotchkes that you give away at the booth. Um, there's a lot of research out there that shows that having something is effective. Uh, I'm a firm believer in, you know, spending more money on fewer things that are going to be higher quality or higher demand. Um, also, don't ever underestimate uh, having items or giveaways that are, that are cute or different. Um, you know, one of my organizations, we sort of uh, adopted the unicorn as our, as our internal spirit animal. Uh, and so we had, uh, you know, unicorn plushies that had our logo on a t-shirt. Um, and so we would give those away and people ate that stuff up. Um, uh, people would wait in line, ask what they had to do in order to get a unicorn. People would even go so far as to post on social after the event, um, you know, pictures of their, their unicorn out in, in the real world. So, you know, at the dinner table with them, out at a restaurant, at a bar, whatever. Um, so people eat stuff like that up. So be creative about it. Come up with something that's, that's kind of more premium and different, not just, you know, the same pens or, you know, uh, you know, coasters or whatever that everybody else is giving away that people are just going to trash. Uh, come up with something that's kind of unique and, and has value for people. And this is a key, something that I learned the hard way and that you see a lot of people not do. So what we covered in the first one are kind of the table stakes, the things you absolutely have to do to have a successful event. These are some of the tricks of the trade that I learned over the years. Um, anything that you can do to use the event as an excuse for pre-event campaigns is great. Um, so, you know, send out at a minimum, let people know that you're going to be at the event, that you're sponsoring it, that you have a booth, where they can find you, what you're doing there. If you've got some sort of a, you know, cool or unique giveaway, let them know about it. So, you know, don't, don't rely on them just stumbling across you. Don't rely on the event promotion to be able to drive awareness or traffic. Do your own. Um, another big one is, you know, doing some sort of a contest or giveaway to coincide with the event. 
Uh, so, you know, at a previous organization, one of the big things we did was we put together like a big event giveaway that went along with the event. So we would do things like, you know, free passes to the event, uh, you know, hotel room stay while they're there, uh, you know, gift card for, you know, food and coffee while they're there, some sort of a free, uh, you know, cool premium giveaway, uh, uh, you know, gift to go alongside it. Uh, and we would generate thousands of registrations for that giveaway before we even went to the event. Um, so oftentimes we would generate more leads from the pre-event promotion and giveaway than we would from our booths at the actual event. Uh, now, you know, point within that is the people that you generate from that are not necessarily going to be as highly qualified as the people that actually show up at the event. Uh, so you're going to have some people kicking the tires, some people that are just interested in the giveaway um, that are registering for that. So it's going to take some more uh, qualification around those people. Uh, to make sure that they're they're the right targets for you versus the people that actually show up at the event are typically going to be more qualified. But that doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile to to do something like that. Um, corollary events at the event are also great ways to extend your reach. Uh, so doing things like happy hours, lunch and learns, uh, reserving a meeting space, uh, you know, finding opportunities to partner with other sponsors at the event. Um, these are great ways to really expand your reach and, and you know, vastly increase the number of leads that you're generating from the event. Again, these are not necessarily going to be as qualified because these are people that didn't actually come to have a conversation with you. Uh, but if it's a, if it's a well-qualified event where most of those people at the event are going to be uh, your target audience, then that, that works out pretty well for you. And even if not, it just requires you going through some additional qualification after the fact. Um, you know, doing VIP events. So one thing that we used to love to do uh, was we would do a harbor cruise out in San Francisco for our VIP customers and our VIP, uh, you know, enterprise clients we were trying to close. Uh, and our success rate at closing those were fantastic. Um, so, you know, again, finding opportunities for, you know, additional events, additional things to go alongside the event that you're sponsoring. Um, this next one is a huge one. Uh, set meetings before the event. Uh, so if you can find or have a, a designated meeting space that you're going to be at, it's going to be manned, then that's fantastic. Um, it's a whole lot better than having people meet you at the booth and trying to have conversations on the expo floor. Uh, it gets really noisy in there. It's hard for people to find you. They get distracted. They get pulled in other directions. Uh, so having a dedicated space that's quiet, that's conducive to meetings uh, is, is a great, great strategy for it. And a great way to do this is have a shared calendar um, where people can book their own time or you can get people booked on it and then farm that out to whoever's available um, at that time during, uh, during the conference. Um, and then this last one's another great way to, to extend your reach. Um, you know, talk to strategic partners, people you know at the event that are, that are talking to, pitching to, selling uh, to similar people that you are. Um, and look for opportunities for introductions. So you know, make sure that they know that you're there so that inevitably as they're having a conversation with somebody who has a need that you can fill, they've got a place to point them to. Um, you know, we did this early on at, with one of my companies uh, where you know, we were specific to people that were on Gmail. Uh, we made really good friends with the person that was specific to people on Outlook. And so anytime we talk to somebody who was on Outlook, we send them to the Outlook guy. Anytime he was talking to somebody who was on Gmail, he sent them to us. Um, and there were multiple other people, vendors there that served those two specific niches. Um, but since we knew each other and we had developed that relationship ahead of time, um, we sent all of our traffic that wasn't a good fit for us to that other person. Um, so don't underestimate the ability to, to work and network with your and other sponsors and partners there. Um, to be able to build out, you know, the number of leads and the connections that you develop there. All right, so you got through the event. Uh, you did all your pre-event promotion. You nailed it at the booth. You had great conversations. You've got this giant list of leads. Uh, now what? So most people are going to do the traditional things. They're going to come back. They're going to load it into marketing automation. They're going to send them a bunch of emails. They're probably going to load it into some sort of a you know, dialing platform or, uh, you know, lead list and have their BDRs go through it and dial people, reach out on uh, social, LinkedIn, stuff like that, trying to set up appointments. Um, and all of that's great, uh, but you're limited in how effective you can do that by what you actually gathered at the event. 
So whatever event, whatever leads you gathered at the event, inevitably they're going to be incomplete. Um, so event registration systems, they only capture a small sample of the data that you may be needing. Um, so typically it's going to be basic things around that individual, you know, first name, last name, you know, company title, uh, you know, maybe some firmographic information about the company, uh, you know, what industry or vertical are they part of, uh, what's the company size. Um, you know, in some cases you get phone number, in some cases all you get is email, in some cases you don't even get email. Um, and the, the kicker with that is you don't have any control over what data is being gathered. This is, this is dictated by whoever's putting the event together. Uh, so they set what fields are required, what fields are optional, um, as part of the registration process. And so uh, you're beholden to whoever's putting on that event and what they've decided was important enough to be included or to be asked for uh, whenever they're doing that. Uh, no matter how good the amount of data they're, you know, they're asking upon registration, uh, you're obviously not gonna be able to talk to everybody. Um, so you know, over however many days the conference is, you're only gonna be able to have so many conversations and it's gonna be uh, you know, a sliver of the total number of attendees and your, your total addressable market at that event. Uh, malfunctions are inevitable. I've never had an event go off without a hitch where something technical didn't happen. I mean, my favorite was, our very first year that we sponsored Dreamforce, um, Salesforce just somehow dropped the ball and didn't collect phone numbers on people. Um, so you know, we generated this big lead list of people, but we had no phone numbers to follow up and pick up the phone and call anybody. Um, and there was nothing we could do about it. Um, you know, Salesforce said, I'm sorry, um, and went on their way. Um, so in that case, you know, there really was nothing we could do with that. Um, or even if you had good conversations, you found a good company, a good account, um, that seems like it would be a fit, uh, you know, odds are that you didn't talk to the decision maker and almost certainly didn't talk to all the decision makers you need to talk to. Um, and so having a way to be able to go out back after the fact and be able to figure out who are these other people that you need to talk to uh, is crucial to it. Uh, and so this is where a data partner comes in. Uh, you can get contact information on the people you need to be talking to. Uh, so like I said, if you had a great conversation with somebody, you've identified a clear need at that organization, but either they weren't your decision maker or there's other decision makers you need to reach out to, um, then you've got a couple options. Either you can have a data partner that allows you to then be able to go into that organization and find the contact information on those other people you need to be talking to, uh, or you're left having to ask for a referral from the person that you had a conversation with. Um, you know, that's not to say you do one at the expense of the other. Of course you do both, but uh, if you have a data partner where you can go and you actually find the information on those people that you need to talk to, and then you can name drop the person you did talk to. Hey, I had a great conversation with Jim. Uh, this sounded like a need that you guys have. Uh, can you confirm? Is that a conversation that's worth us following up on? Um, you know, again, uh, you know, on average, you know, for a SaaS sale these days, you're going to have seven to eight decision makers at the table. Chances that you had conversations with all seven or eight of those people at the conference, or even that all seven or eight of those people were there to begin with, are slim to none. Uh, slim to none. Uh, and the similar, uh, you know, if you only have one point of contact with that company and they go dark, you know, say, you know, and this happens all the time. Uh, they get back from the conference and uh, they're just swamped. You know, they've got a week's worth of stuff they got to catch up on. They have 200 vendors that they talk to that are all, you know, trying to, to get a meeting, get a follow-up call, all of that. And you just fall through the cracks. Uh, or as happens very often, they just straight up forget who you were, what you did, why this was important, why they want to have a following on conversation with you. But for whatever reason, they, they don't get back to you. You can't, you can't kick that conversation back off. Having other people to reach out to becomes really crucial. Uh, another piece of it, like I mentioned, you have incomplete data that you're working off of, and in particular, company intelligence is an area that, that really comes up short uh, at conferences. So most of the data that you're gonna gather off of registration is gonna be specific to that person. Uh, you know, it's going to be their name, their email address, their phone number, their title. Um, and then you're going to get very little in the way of company information beyond company name, maybe company size, and maybe company industry. Um, anything additional detail around that, uh, you're unlikely to be getting. Um, and so, you know, you, you're, 
you know, for a lot of organizations, that's not enough. You need more detail. You need more information to be able to figure out who actually to target. Uh, ideally, you get that additional information by having conversations at the booth, but inevitably your conversations are going to get cut short. Uh, you're going to lose your notes on who you talk to. Somebody doesn't enter something incorrectly, um, or you just, you know, you straight up couldn't hear them. Um, and then another big one, if you're, if you're somebody like, you know, I've been with, with some of my previous companies, uh, where you were really technographically focused. So I mentioned the one where, you know, uh, you know, the early years we, we could only serve people on Gmail. Um, so it was vitally important for us to know which of those people from the conference uh, were using Gmail and were not. Um, so similarly, if you if you only plug into like a certain CRM uh, or a certain phone system uh, or a certain uh, you know finance accounting system, uh, those are really vital pieces of information for you to be able to have and know who you're supposed to be targeting and who you need to follow up with, who to prioritize. Uh, and that information is virtually never part of what's gathered from the event. And the last piece of it is uh, knowing the right time and intent to be able to follow up and try and close the deal. Uh, so the fact that somebody you know, took the time, paid the money to go and show up in an event is a really strong indicator of intent. Um, but even though you've got these strong indicators of intent, um, that doesn't tell you exactly where they are, what phase they're in, where they're in the buying process. Uh, so you don't know whether they're just, they're there doing initial due diligence. You know, hey, we think we might have a problem or we might need to, to come up with a solution or a partner, a vendor around whatever this is. And we're just trying to get educated about it. Um, it's not even further than that. We don't really know, you know, definitively, is that a problem for us or how, how big of a deal is that problem? We don't even, you know, or we know that's a problem, but we don't even know what's out there as a possible solution. Um, those types of things. And so further up the funnel um, where you're going to have to do more, you know, education, try and figure out, you know, and nurture them, get them further down that process and, and further down the buying decision. Um, they could be there just, you know, they know that they need a solution, um, but they don't know who they want to go with. So they're there, to, they're there trying to do their shopping and, and evaluate different competing options. Uh, or they may have already narrowed that list uh, down to, or have a solid list of all of the potential vendors, and now they're trying to whittle it down to, you know, their top two or three. Um, or they could be there and they're, you know, they're close to making that final decision. They're just doing one last pass, one last review. Or, you know, they may want to have, you know, a face-to-face -face conversation with a vendor before they make that investment. Uh, but knowing where they are in that process uh, and having a data you know, partner that's able to help you know where they are. And so, you know, buying intent data is where you can look at, you know, indicators like what are they searching for? Um, what are people at the organization, you know, looking for? Uh, you know, who are, what conversations they have and who are they talking to? Uh, all the way down to, uh, you know, what positions are they hiring for? Um, you know, what types of interviews are they having? And all of these can be really strong indicators as to where they are in that, that process and what stage of their buying decision they are, they're in. Um, this is really important in helping you to, again, identify you know, who you should be prioritizing or following up. Because if you did a really good job uh, at the event, you should have you know, hundreds to thousands of leads to follow up with. Um, that's a really big list and, and the clock's ticking. So as soon as you get back from that, you know, the, the timing is, is crucial on that. And so knowing who to follow up with, who to prioritize within your limited bandwidth and your limited ability to reach out and follow up with people is really, really crucial to the success of your campaigns. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a real quick run through. Like I said, you know, many, many years of doing this and, and I know, you know, there's a lot of things I learned early on, you know, how to do those, those basic table stakes things right. Um, as well as you know some additional sort of innovative things that I've done over the years. But one of the single biggest things is being able to flesh out you know the data that you have, being able to append additional information to those records, to those people, uh, being able to identify additional decision makers at those companies, um, being able to to find you know even if you for instance didn't talk to a specific company there, but uh, you you were able to find hey that was a perfect fit, or maybe somebody you talked to there knew of another company that had a need, but they weren't there in attendance or you didn't get have a chance to talk to them. Uh, you now will act off of that information, that intelligence that you gathered there at your booth. 
be able to go and find people to reach out to at those other organizations. And so, uh, you know, this is a way for you to, to leverage and vastly increase, you know, the number of people you have to follow up with from an event and uh, be able to better target those people from the event. Uh, so we'll open it up to questions. Um, we've got a few minutes here at the end. Uh, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and pop that into uh, the Zoom side panel there. All right. Well, if that's the case, I'll give everybody five minutes back today. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll be sending out a, a email following this with a link to the deck and the recording. Uh, feel free to reply to that email if you have any questions or there's anything that we can uh, help you out with. And thanks for joining us today.